Hi folks, this is Jason. Hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you and uh, it's good to see you. We're looking at the martyrs of Lyons and Vienne and Ovini. And um, we're looking at it from a book called Sketches in Church History by uh, Robertson. Uh, it's in the public domain and uh, people are free to use it. And so. That's what we're going to look at now, and I hope that you're going to be blessed um, by by this. Many other martyrs suffered in various parts of the empire under the reign of Marcus Aurelius. Among the most famous of these are the martyrs of Lyons and Vienna or Vienna in the south of France or Gaul as it was then called where a company of missionaries from Asia Minor had settled with a bishop named Pothinus at their head. The persecution at Lyons and um, Vienna was begun by the mob of those towns who insulted the Christians in the streets, broke into their houses and committed other such outrages against them. Then a great number of Christians were seized and imprisoned in horrid dungeons where many died for want of food or from the bad, bad and unwholesome air. The bishop, Pothinus, who was 90 years of age and had long been very ill, was carried before the governor and was asked, Who is the God of Christians? Pothinus saw the governor did not put the question from any good feeling, so he answered, If thou be worthy, thou shalt know. The bishop, old and feeble as he was, was then dragged about by soldiers and such of the mob as could reach him gave him blows and kicks, while others who were further off threw anything which came to hand at him. And after this cruel usage he was put into prison where he died within two days. The other prisoners were tortured for six days together in a variety of horrible ways. Their whims were stretched on the rack, they were cruelly scourged. Some had hot plates of iron up to them, and some were made to sit in a red-hot iron chair. The firmness with which they bore these dreadful trials gave courage to those of their brethren who at first agreed to sacrifice so that these now again declared themselves Christians and joined the others in suffering. As all the tortures were of no effect, the prisoners were at length put to death. Some were thrown to wild beasts, but those who were citizens of Rome were beheaded for it was not lawful to give a Roman citizen up to wild beasts, such as we know from St. Paul's case at Philippi that was not lawful to scourge a citizen. Among the barters was a boy from Asia only 15 years old who was taken every day to see the tortures of the rest in the hope that he might be frightened to deny him his saviour. But he was not shaken by the terrible sights and for his constancy he was cruelly put to death on the last day. The greatest cruelest of all however were born by a young woman named Blandina. She was slave to a Christian lady and although the Christian regarded her slave with kindness very unlike the usual feelings of heathen masters towards them. This lady seemed to have thought that a slave was not likely to endure torture so courageously as a free person, and she was the more afraid because Blandina was not strong in body. But the poor slave's faith was not to be overcome. Day after day she bravely bore every cruelty that the persecutors could think of, and all that they could wring out from her was, I am a Christian, and nothing wrong is done among us. The heathen were not content with putting the martyrs to death with torture to allow them, or allow them to die in prison. They cast their dead bodies to the dogs and caused them to be watched day and night lest the other Christians should give them burial. And after this they burnt the bones and threw the ashes of them into the river. Oh, by way of mocking at the notion of a resurrection. For a sample, Paul had found at Athens, Acts 17.32 and elsewhere, there was no part of the gospel which the heathen in general thought so hard to believe as the doctrine that which is sown in corruption shall therefore be raised in incorruption, that that which is sown in a natural body will one day be raised as a spiritual body. I'm nearly in tears, that's just an amazing story. Just remember, if you're a Christian, to stand fast. Think about the martyrs that well, they've gone through. It's nothing compared to what you're going through. So stand fast for the gospel. Preach the gospel. Get out. Evangelize. Tell people about Jesus. 
spread the word, start house groups, start churches, plant churches, go out into all the world and do your missionary tasks. God bless you.